Welcome to the National Commission for the Certification of Crane Operators Service Truck Crane Operator Practical Exam. If there is anything in this video you do not understand, please request clarification from the practical examiner. The NCCCO Service Truck Crane Operator Practical Exam consists of six tasks. You must complete all phases of the test in sequence. There is also a pre-test briefing as well as pre-test and pre-task familiarization periods. Prior to taking the exam, you will be informed of the make and model of the service truck crane as well as the weight of the test weight. While you wait for your opportunity to test, you will be provided time to read the descriptions of the tasks you will need to perform and to review the operator's manual and load charts for the crane you will be operating. The service truck crane you will operate has been set up and leveled prior to testing. A spirit level is available if you wish to verify the crane has been leveled properly. No part of the course has been placed at a radius that exceeds the crane's rated capacity. The test site coordinator is responsible for setting the testing schedule for the day. Once you've completed all your testing, you must leave the test area. If you wish to retest, you will be required to re-register and pay the testing fees again. The only personnel allowed in the test area are those who are actively involved in the administration of the practical exam. You are under the supervision of the practical examiner and required to follow their instructions and signals at all times. The examiner has the authority to stop the test if you operate in an unsafe manner. Task 1. Pre-Operational Shift Inspection The first part of the practical exam will be an evaluation of your ability to identify elements critical to a crane's pre-operational shift inspection. The examiner will ask you to describe how you would inspect five different areas related to the machine. You will have approximately one minute per item. Pre-Test Familiarization Period you will be allowed five minutes to familiarize yourself with the crane and to examine anything on it that you feel is necessary to operate it comfortably. You will be allowed to get the feel of the controls and are permitted to run the crane through its functions. Do not interfere with the test course, attempt to lift the test weight, or shadow the corridor. You must finish the pre-test familiarization period with the boom tip centered over the top of the chain assembly in preparation for task two. The examiner will notify you when there is one minute remaining. If you are ready before the full five minutes have passed, you may indicate this to the examiner. If at the end of the pre-test familiarization period, you feel you are not ready to take the exam, you should notify the examiner. You will have disqualified yourself from taking the exam at this time, and you will be required to sign to that effect on the candidate score sheet. If you are using a remote control, at no time during the familiarization period or test should you walk into any part of the course or walk underneath the test weight or boom. Walking underneath the test weight is considered an unsafe act and the examiner is required to stop the test. If your time during any of the tasks exceeds more than twice the optimum time, the examiner may ask you to stop and move on to the next task. Task 2. Chain in Circle Optimum Time, 1 minute, 30 seconds At the examiner's indication to start, at which point timing will begin, raise the chain to clear all obstacles and personnel. Bring the chain from its starting position over to designated area 2 and land the chain fully inside the circle. Once the chain makes contact with the ground inside the circle, do not lift the chain off the ground. Avoid contacting anything but designated area 2. Once the chain is under control inside the circle, the examiner will give you a stop signal. Points will be deducted for the following dragging the chain or contacting the ground outside of the circle, allowing the hook to touch the ground either inside or outside of the circle, allowing the hook or chain to contact any part of the course or crane. 
lifting the chain off the ground after it has made contact with the ground inside the circle. Exceeding optimum time. Pre-task familiarization period. At the examiner's indication, bring the hook over to the test weight located in the test weight area. The load will be attached by either the examiner or proctor. You will be allowed to lift the test weight and get the feel of the load before beginning the next task. You may not shadow the zigzag corridor. You will be allowed five minutes for this pre-task familiarization period. At the end of this time, you must place the test weight on the ground inside the test weight area. The examiner will notify you when there is one minute remaining. If you are ready before the full five minutes have passed, you may indicate this to the examiner. Task 3. Test weight in pole circle. Optimum time, two minutes. At the examiner's indication to start, at which point timing will begin, lift the test weight from the test weight area and place it in designated area 3. Please remember that tube blocking or activating the anti tube block device at any time during the exam will be considered an unsafe act and the examiner will stop the test. Once the test weight is on the ground, fully inside designated area 3, the examiner will give you the stop signal. Points will be deducted for the following. Test weight touching the ground outside of designated area 3. Knocking ball off pole. Knocking pole over. Exceeding optimum time. Task 4. Zigzag Corridor. This task is divided up into two separate subtasks, 4A and 4B. Task 4A requires you to negotiate the zigzag corridor in a forward direction, and all functions may be used. Task 4B requires you to negotiate the zigzag corridor in a reverse direction. You may not telescope during this task. The optimum time for task 4A is 5 minutes 30 seconds and 6 minutes for task 4B. For task 4A, at the examiner's indication to start, at which point timing will begin, lift the test weight and guide it through the zigzag corridor. Avoid touching or knocking over any part of the PVC barriers, touching the ground with the test weight or raising it so high that the chain leaves the ground. Place the test weight completely inside designated area 2. Timing will end once the test weight has been placed fully inside designated area 2 and the examiner has given you the stop signal. For this task, the chain is not required to be fully inside the designated area. Points will be deducted for the following. Knocking the ball off a pole. Moving a pole base off the line. Knocking a pole over. Test weight touching the ground. Lifting the chain off the ground. Passing poles with the chain off the ground. Test weight contacting outrigger. Circumventing the course. Exceeding optimum time. For task 4B, at the examiner's indication to start, at which point timing will begin, lift the test weight and guide it back through the zigzag corridor in the reverse direction. Remember that you are not permitted to use the telescope function during this task.
As you guide the test weight, avoid touching or knocking over any part of the PVC barriers, touching the ground with the test weight, or raising it so high that the chain leaves the ground. Place the test weight completely inside designated area 1. Timing will end once the test weight has been placed fully inside designated area 1 and the examiner has given you the stop signal. For this task, the chain is not required to be fully inside the designated area. Points will be deducted for the following. Knocking the ball off a pole. Moving a pole base off the line. Knocking a pole over. Test weight touching the ground. Lifting the chain off the ground. Passing poles with the chain off the ground. Test weight contacting outrigger. Telescoping the boom. Circumventing the course. Exceeding optimum time. Task 5. Safe shutdown and securing procedures. This task is intended to evaluate your knowledge of the proper procedures required to safely shut down and secure the crane. The examiner will ask you to describe the safe shutdown procedures you would apply to the crane in preparation to leave the site. After the exam, please do not ask the examiner to review your score sheet or discuss your performance, since they are not permitted to do so. Your results will be sent to you within 12 business days after receiving your score sheet. If you have completed all of your tests, you must leave the test site. Otherwise, you should return to the pre-test briefing area. Thank you for participating in the NCCCO Service Truck Crane Operator Certification Program.